Hello, my name is Sharad Joyce, and I have with me Prem Roshan Madhusudan Nair, and two of us are product owners for data privacy services on the SAP Cloud Platform. Today, we would like to showcase what our service data privacy integration can do with respect to supporting privacy of data in the intelligent enterprise scenarios. Let us start with the agenda of what we are going to cover today as part of our session. We would like to start with providing you with some of the basic terminologies around data privacy so that me and you are both on the same page of what we call privacy and what we call um, a scenario of data privacy. We will then go into the aspects of what the data privacy integration service has to offer in terms of the overview, uh, different aspects of the service in terms of what is the vision we are trying to solve here. And we go into a little bit of the description of the use case, what kind of use cases fit as part of the data privacy integration service. Then a little bit of a deeper analysis of the architectural and API overviews of the data privacy integration service. And we also then close out before the demo with the stakeholder scenario of the service as well. Let us start with a basic introduction to data privacy about what data privacy is. So I think this is a very famous quote. I'm sure most of you would have heard or seen or even maybe experienced. So basically, uh, many a times there is a feeling that data privacy or data compliance or compliance of data is a costly affair or an expensive affair. But I think most of us have understood, have realized that having or being non-compliant from a business software perspective could cost, could cost you a lot more, could be a lot more expensive than being compliant as such. So I think this is one of the famous statements I think I thought would be the right thing to start with of why privacy is important. Let's go then with respect to what are some of the data privacy terms we should familiarize ourselves with. So to start with, I think this might startle some of you, but I think from a data privacy point of view, processing of personal data is basically forbidden. Bear with me. It's forbidden only in scenarios where there is no legal reason or a business purpose or a justifying reason for doing so. That means that any business process that is being delivered as a business software by applications and companies can only process personal data if there is a justifying reason behind it. So every business process or everything that is related to data privacy bases its uh, you know, whole logic behind that any business process that happens has to happen for a particular business purpose. So I think this is one of the questions that I think probably we get asked the most that is, what is personal data? You know, many a times we get to hear that I, as an application developer, I only store uh, details like an ID or an email address or just a, sometimes even a GUID. That's what the developers go with. Uh, then they say, is it really a personal data? Um, that's when I would like to sort of uh, define it through the article from the GDPR, EU GDPR, which is EU's General Data Privacy Regulation. and in terms of EU GDPR, the definition of personal data, I think, is the apt one to coin here. So basically, personal data means any information, you know, uh, that is identified or identifiable directly or indirectly to a natural person. As simple as that. Any data that can be identified to a natural person is termed as personal data. And the moment you have anything close to that, which means any personal data that you process as part of your business application would basically mean that you are processing personal data and you need to do that with a justifiable purpose and a logical reason. With that, with that in place, let's see some of the examples or definitions of what can be a personal data. As you know, some of the obvious examples are a name or a postal address or your house address, the email address, you know, all these are definitely termed personal data and most of us agree with it. But what could also be personal data is for example, you know, a MAC address or even an IP address of your system uh, could be your license plate number or a membership number, which is a pure number or an ID or a GUID, whatever it could be. Uh, it is still a personal data because end of the day, it connects it back to a natural person and having any of this information would still mean that you are still processing a personal data or storing a personal data in your business application. 
So with that, um, you know, settled in terms of what exactly constitutes a personal data, let's see an example of a typical business suite application. Let's take an order management kind of an application of an S4 or a business suite or an ERP system and uh, see how or what all personal data that we usually store and process. Uh, if you think about it from an onboarding point of view, of course, you have the business partner service, which probably does the onboarding for you. And of course, the PPIDs and the addresses and the name and everything that you maintain as part of the business process onboarding uh, is definitely, of course, the personal data. But once you move into the business aspect of things, you might have something like a contract signed as part of you getting onboarded. You might, as, doing the, as part of doing the business, you might create an order sales order, for example, or a purchase order. You might have some of the deliveries triggered for you. Uh, you would have some invoice generated. You would do some payments that are maintained as well. All of this is also personal data when you speak of a typical order to cash kind of a business application. This is very important because many a times we think the master data, which is basically the business partner information or a profile information as personal data, but we never consider a sales order or a purchase order as personal data, but it is very much a personal data as well. And processing of that should also be done in a transparent and legal manner. With that, let us coin a few more terms which are very important down the line for understanding our services in the future, in the future slides. And it's also key in terms of understanding the data privacy integration service. So as I think we already discussed, what is a data subject? Data subject is basically any natural person whose data is being processed as part of that particular company's business application. That is, if you, take, if you take GDPR as an example again, EU GDPR, every EU citizen who is doing business with one of the companies is a data subject as such. What is a data controller? A data controller is someone who is actually doing the business with the data subject in terms of he is the one who is actually holding the personal data or processing the personal data of the data subject. That means that he is someone who is uh, storing all those personal details about the end user. He is the one who is doing business with the end user and he is someone who is controlling the data as such. So if you take as an example of SAP's customers, for example, uh, customer ABC would be a data controller of the end users that he processes with. And SAP, on the other hand, would be data processor. So what exactly do we mean then by data processors definition? Data processor is someone who is basically helping you with respect to processing of those personal data of the customers or the end users, which basically means that we are providing you with the tools and softwares that helps process the personal data of the end user. So in a typical context, a data processor would be SAP and a customer of SAP would be a data controller as such. Moving on to this, uh, let's now get right into the uh, service that we are trying to discuss today, which is the data privacy integration kernel service, which is the data privacy solution for all intelligent enterprise scenarios. For that, I will hand it over to my product owner and good friend, Prem. Thank you, Shudan. So I would like to give you an overview of the data privacy integration service, which is our offering for realizing data privacy functions and use cases for your application. So the data privacy integration service is a service on the cloud platform that helps to ensure that information that is personal data that is processed by your applications is done in a compliant manner based on a valid business purpose as mentioned by Sharad before. So the main capabilities of the service is to centrally configure and manage the life cycle of business purpose or what we call as business context within the service. Ensure that information processing is done based on a valid business purpose help the applications to retrieve all the personal data stored of their end users, trigger correction requests of the personal data if necessary, and also export the personal data in email and as a client download as well. The service has got capabilities to also define the retention period which is used for determining when the personal data can be deleted from the system. Some of the key benefits of the service is that it provides easy to use query-based applications that helps the data privacy specialist or a customer service representative in your organization or business to realize the data privacy use cases. The service is also built with an API first approach. So you can use the APIs to realize the different data privacy use cases. We'll get to that in a bit more detail as well. It's easy to integrate. So you can integrate your applications with the service by using uh, standard interfaces such as the REST or OData based interfaces. All you have to do is annotate your data model with the right annotation so that our service could discover what attributes our personal data and help 
with the information reporting, deletion, and other use cases with respect to data privacy. Also, the service has cross landscape capabilities. So, if your application is part of the Cloud Foundry runtime or the Kima runtime in the Cloud Platform, you could easily connect to and consume the service. You can also consume the service from outside the Cloud Platform with a very minimum footprint on the Cloud Platform as such. And the service helps with an end to end management of data privacy. We'll see this in the coming slides as well. Yeah. As mentioned by Sharad, uh, it's very important that you have a valid business purpose to in order to process personal data. So data privacy integration takes a purpose first approach. So that's how we help to realize end-to-end -end data privacy. This is done via the business context management or business purpose management feature or capability within the service. So this ensures that you can configure the necessary purposes and the capability also gives you API so that you can associate or you can tag all the personal data in your application with the right business purpose. So these are the main capabilities, that is definition of the business context or purpose. The configuration of the purpose itself involves doing multiple co configuration actions, such as defining the legal ground or legal basis for processing data. This, as you've seen in the introduction, is the legal basis, such as a contract or a consent, based on which you can process your end user personal data. You can also define what is the data controller or legal entity which is responsible for processing of the data. Also, you can define the different business processes that can be executed or run for the data subject based on this legal ground and legal basis, what kind of data objects can be processed and what data attributes or fields which have personal data can be processed by the application. With such a configuration, I mean, you can realize granular management of data privacy and also definition of granular definition of the residence rule so that you can ensure the right data is deleted at the right time. So this is how we realize an end data privacy from an end-to-end -end perspective. Yeah. The target vision for our service is to provide a single data lifecycle cockpit from which you can, for a given data set, come to know which, which is the legal entity that is responsible for processing personal data, what is the locality, or basically what are the applications through which the data has been processed, what is the legitimation or legal basis for processing this data. You can also know what is the life cycle of the data. For example, is the data still in active processing or can it be deleted as such? You can also get a detailed view of what are the business processes and the process instances that where the data has been processed as such. So with this, let's look into a problem statement and use case. So the ideal problem statement would be where I as an end user want to know what kind of personal data is stored about me and where is this personal data stored. So as you know that modern IT landscapes have a number of business applications that process your personal data when you realize an end-to-end -end use case. For example, we look at a use case such as a lead to cash or an order to cash scenario, where we can see that, I mean, even in a simple use case, the data goes through two to three systems for sure before you can realize your end-to-end -end business. So I, as an end user, want to know what are the different systems, where my personal data is being processed, and why is my data being processed across so many applications. So let's start with the sample scenario. So we picked the lead to cash IES use case for seeing how the data privacy integration service can help realize data privacy functions in such an end-to-end -end use case. So in such a scenario, the customer data or the end user data would be created, let's say, for example, in an application like the customer data cloud. So here the end user would sign up to certain privacy statements. It could be a contract or a consent before their personal data is stored and processed. So in such a scenario, the application could connect to the service and create a purpose instance for the processing of personal data. With this, I mean, as the user data is processed by the different applications for different aspects of your business process, for example, a marketing system may create a marketing campaign to, to promote the products as such to the end user. So such marketing data can be associated with the created purpose. Also later on, when the customer places an order in the system, the sales order and any necessary entities such as the quotations, subscriptions, and bills so on can be associated to the centralized business purpose. The main benefit with this, with the central management of business purpose is that we could easily across the landscape discover the right, the personal data that is stored across the landscape for the particular purpose. And also when the purpose has reached end of business, we can trigger the deletion of the personal data. With that, I mean, let's look at a demo scenario, how this looks like in the live landscape. Hello everyone, welcome to the demo of data privacy integration service. I would like to first show you the necessary configurations that have to be performed to realize this end-to-end -end scenario. We start off with the configuration of business purpose. This is provided as part of the business con context configuration capability in the service. 
business purpose or as we call it the business context configuration consists of the configuration of the legal ground which is nothing but the legal basis for uh, storing and processing personal data such as a contract or a consent who, which is the data controller or the legal entity that is responsible for storage and processing of the personal data which business processes are allowed to store or process the personal data and what data categories and business objects can do so and finally the business context which brings together the different aspects as part of a single configuration object i would now like to give you a detailed overview of the configuration we start first with the configuration of the legal ground in the interest of time i have already created some of the configurations which we'll be using for this use case so let's start with the configuration that i have created which is the consent for the sales business process which is the sample scenario we'll be seeing today as part of our demo on selection of the configuration we can see the different aspects of the legal ground here we see that the legal ground is defined for the sales business process and the legal ground is type of type consent legal grounds can also be of type a uh, contract and so on the next entity that we would like to see is the data controller which is basically the legal entity which is responsible for processing of the personal data of the data subject for this scenario we have defined the data controller by the name nestle deutschland and we see the different details regarding the data controller in your business scenario this can be the different legal entities in your organization for example the different company codes defined as part of your organizational structure and so on the legal entity can be set up to read the organizational structure from your existing systems for example you could configure the legal entity to be read based on the organizational structure defined in your s4 hana system with that i mean we go to the next entity which is the data controller group in the interest of time i would not go in detail here but data controller group can be used to simulate scenarios where you have a joint data controllership next we have the business process and the business sub process configuration so business process is basically composed of multiple business sub processes for example the is scenario such as the lead to cash can be composed of multiple sub processes such as order management marketing and so on in this case scenario we have created a business sub process for the order management that is for creating an order and to simulate the sales business process in this case we have defined what are the different business objects that can be processed as part of this business process that is the business partner which is the customer in this scenario as well as the sales uh, order business object which is created as part of the sales business process the business object here can be composed of further data categories or data attributes of the business object so in this case the business partner has the personal details which is the first name last name email and so on which can be processed as part of this business object so basically what we are doing in this step is defining what data attributes of the customer and the sales order business objects can be processed as part of this purpose the next step is to define the business process which is also called business context in our terminology where we bring together all the different attributes so in this scenario to simulate the lead to cash scenario we have defined a business purpose or a business context where we say that the business process is order management which we have just uh seen the configuration for the data controller is in a euro as and we also define which is the data subject role uh for the data subject whose personal data we would like to store and process also we specify the different legal grounds which are associated with this particular purpose so with these steps we have defined the business purpose itself and the different associated attributes of the business purpose the data privacy integration service provides apis that now allows your application to run your business processes store and process personal data based on this purpose so basically the applications can call the apis discover the right business purpose based on what is the business process the application is executing 
what are the data objects and data categories that are processed by the application and so on. With, by discovering the business purpose, the application can then associate what personal data is stored or processed in their systems and what is the corresponding purpose for doing so. Next, we configure the retention rules for the deletion of the personal data. This is done by using the Manage Business Purpose applications as part of the deletion configuration of the service. In the interest of time, again, I have defined the configuration beforehand. So we can see here there is a business purpose that is lead to cash for this particular scenario for which we have already defined the retention rules. During the configuration, it's necessary to provide the application group uh, for the applications whose personal data we would like to delete application group is defined as part of the step when you integrate your application with the service this is done when you create a service instance and provide the necessary configuration where you have to define the application name and the application group for your particular application next we select the data subject role which is the customer in this particular scenario we also define the legal entity whose data we would like to delete the next step is the definition of the different data objects or the business objects and what is the deletion or the retention rules for this business object. So as you saw in our scenario, we have the business partner or the master data business object that is the customer business object as well as the sales order business object for which we would like to define the retention rules in the system. Residence period here is defined as the time period beyond the end of business when the data can reside in the application. Beyond the residence period, the data has to be moved into a blocking store. Res retention period is defined as the time period after the end of business when the data has to be deleted from all the applications that reside. That is, the data has to be deleted even from the blocking store. The end of business as such depends upon the scenario. In our use case here, we have defined end of business when all the sales documents or the sales order for a business partner has been completed or has been processed successfully. With all the necessary configurations now in place, we can run through our sample lead to cash scenario. As part of this scenario, we'll start off by creating a customer master data object. So this will do as part of the customer onboarding sample application that we have here. We'll follow this up by creating few transactional data for the customer here that we create. This would be sales order that we create as part of the order management sample application that we have created here. So let's start with the creation of the customer business partner object. The customer business partner would be the master data in our scenario, which would have personal data such as the first name, last name, address information, phone number, email, and so on. So let's start by creating the customer object. So in this scenario, let's call the customer as Sarah Jones. So I provide the first name, last name, the necessary personal data that is needed for me to fulfill my business process such as the address here, the telephone number, email ID and finally the date of birth. After providing all the necessary details, the customer would then go through the privacy statement such as uh, consent statement in this sample scenario. So the terms and condition itself is not part of the data privacy service, but this could come from any external systems uh, that the customer may have, or for example, customer data cloud is an example of a system that could be the source for the terms and condition of the consent. Once the customer reads through the privacy statement and agrees to the condition, we can go ahead with creating the master data in the system. At this point, we see that the master data for the customer is saved. Also, we uh, parallelly in the background, a purpose record is created for this particular data subject in the business context management capability of the service. So any further data that gets created, including the master data itself, can be associated to the purpose that is defined centrally in the system by using the APIs of the service. With the master data and the purpose created, we can now go to the next step, which is the creation of transactional data, that is the sales order in this scenario. So let's go ahead and place certain orders in this sample application for the business partner that we have just created. So I select Sarah as the business partner. Let me place some order for bank in cartridges here. 
so we see that the order has been placed and yeah and just to, so that we can simulate the deletion use case as well i say that the order has been received so in this sample application that we built, please note again that this is the sample scenario uh, and these are sample applications that we make the uh, lead to cache kind of use case so what we have done here is on the completion of the order we have defined the end of business for the data subject so with the completion of the order when i say that i have received the order we sarah has now the data for sarah has reached the end of business and we can now see the information using the uh, service as we can also trigger the deletion of the data once the retention period is complete so now that we have all the data created in the system let's look at how a data privacy request for information or a data privacy request for deletion of data can be realized by using the service let's now imagine a scenario where sara comes to your business and requests for what personal data is stored in the system this is the scenario where the data subject can request what personal data is being processed by a data controller this can be realized by using the manage personal data application as part of the personal data management capability in the service so let's open the application so this application is positioned towards a customer service representative in your business who could based on the let's say call from the data subject or let's say by request that comes from the data subject for information query what personal data is stored and either trigger a export of the personal data as a email so that the data subject can then download the information or download the information and send this to the data subject as part of the information request the customer service representative would first search for the data subject in the system based on the search criteria so let's provide the first name last name and email address which is what we provided when creating the customer data object as part of the demo We can see the list of data subjects that fulfill the search criteria. In this case, we see Sarah Jones displayed for the application lead to cache. Let's click on the entry here and we can see further details regarding the data subject for in the context of this particular application. On the selection of the line item, we can see what is the personal data stored, that is what is the master data stored about the customer in the system. In this particular application also we can see what are the different transactional data that is stored the service also allows to trigger operations for correction as well as there is option to export the personal data of the data subject as part of the export of personal data it's possible to trigger an email export with the human readable pdf format of the personal data as well as machine readable json and XML format. It's also possible to trigger a client download of the data as well in both PDF and JSON or XML formats. Let's select the option to export the personal data of Sarah Jones along with all the transactional data in the system and select download. We'll be able to see in the export request the date the request has been received and we can also see that the file is ready for download. In this case, we have triggered a PDF export of the data and we can see the information, the personal data, that is the master data for the data subject as well as the transactional data where the data subject data is stored. It is also possible to request for the deletion of the data, personal data of the data subject through the information UI. This triggers the end of purpose check via the deletion capability and if the end of business is reached for the data subject, then the data is deleted from the system. It's also possible for a data privacy officer within the business to check all the data subjects that have reached end of business and trigger the deletion of the data subject. This is done via the delete data subject information application. Here we can see the list of applications that have been integrated with the service in our use case, we see the lead to cache application here. We can trigger a check for the data subjects that can be deleted in the system. Let's refresh to check the list. We see that the data subject which we have created has reached end of business and can be deleted from the system. The application also lists all the other data subjects that 
would be ready for deletion if they have reached end of business as well. Let's select the data subject we have created in this use case and request for deletion of data. Let's refresh to see the status of deletion. We see that the data subject is no longer available and has been deleted from the system. Let's verify the same through the information application as well. Let's go back to the manage personal data application. Search for the data subject. And we see that the data subject is no longer available for search. With this, we have covered how we can configure business purposes, how applications can use the APIs of the service to associate their data with a particular business purpose. We have also seen how the information report can be used to see what personal data is stored for a data uh, subject in the landscape and also trigger the deletion of the data subject data when it has reached the end of business. Hope the demo was informative and back to the presentation. Thank you. With that, let's go have a deep dive into the architecture and the API overview for the service. Yeah. So here you see on the right hand side, the different components of the data privacy integration service. So we see there is a service layer as well as a layer for the UI applications. The UI applications are the Fiori apps that can be used for configuration as well as for realizing the data privacy functions like information retrieval, data deletion, and so on. To the left, you will see the service and the broker layer. So this is what exposes the API so that you can use the APIs to trigger deletion as well as export of personal data. On the left-hand side, you will see the different components of the service. So the personal data management component is what helps with the information retrieval use case as such. It's the information framework functionality within the service. Next is the data retention manager capability, which is used for defining the retention rule and for triggering deletion of the data. Finally, is the business context management, which is the central configuration and lifecycle tool for business purpose. Going a bit more deeper into the APIs, so we can see that we have three sets of APIs, that is the information retrieval API. So the information framework APIs provides the personal data retrieval API, as well as the APIs to trigger data export and client download of the data. The deletion APIs expose capability to configure the retention rules, trigger the end of purpose check, as well as trigger the deletion of data. Finally, the business context management APIs provide the capability to configure business purposes, create a purpose instance, for example, like when you saw in the use case, when the customer is onboarded into the landscape, a purpose record is created. So the APIs allow you to create a purpose instance for the data subject. And also there are APIs to associate all the personal data with the centralized business purpose. Going a bit deeper into the architecture, so we have the design time or the configuration. So this is where the data privacy specialist would define the business context or the purpose. In the configuration, it's called as the purpose template, configuration object within which you can define the legal entity, the legal ground, business process, and so on. You can also configure, as you can see, the master data or the transactional data objects that can be processed based on the purpose, as well as the different data categories, such as address, personal information, bank information, so on, that can be processed based on this particular purpose. In the runtime view, we see the purpose record. So this is what is created when you, as part of your business process, a data subject or an end user would be onboarded onto the business process. So you create a purpose record, and then you have the ability to associate or tag all the personal data to this centralized purpose record. So it is with this centralized management of business purpose that we can give an end-to-end -end view of what personal data is stored across the applications, as well as when the end of business is reached, we can trigger the deletion of the personal data as and when required. With that, we would like to showcase some of the scenarios that we plan to, that we are working on and would like to deliver as part of the service. The first use case we would like to consider in an end-to-end -end use case, I an mean, end-to-end scenario like an IES scenario is where we have data being replicated from one system to other downstream systems as such. 
One such use case is where the subscription billing data is replicated from the revenue cloud service on the cloud platform to downstream systems such as s -Code. This is done via the business event bus service, and we are working on a concept where we can integrate with the business event bus service as such, so that whenever data has to be replicated to any downstream system, you can evaluate if there is a valid purpose or business reason to do so. Another use case is where, as part of the hired to retire scenario, or the total workforce management use case, we replicate employee data from success factor to S4 or other downstream systems. So here we are working on integration with master data integration service, where we can evaluate the business purpose and ensure that only the relevant data is replicated to any downstream system. For example, in a business case such as total workforce management, we may have use cases where a contract employee, for example, has to be replicated only to a field class system and not to other downstream systems as such. With the help of purpose management, we can realize such kind of use cases. And this is what we plan to deliver as in the roadmap as part of our service. So this is what we mainly had for the session. I hope you had a great time and you had valuable learnings from the data privacy scenarios and how a service can help with such kind of data privacy use cases. Also, please look out for the other sessions that are planned as part of the ticket. And I hope you have a great learning experience and enjoy the ticket. Thank you very much. Thank you.